السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah's peace, mercy and blessings be upon you Permit me to use the opportunity to speak on the, the good virtues of our late brother Sheikh Abu Bakr Jiro Argungu, may Allah have mercy on him I intended to present this tribute but I couldn't find time to do that due to some activities beyond my control. I was able to complete the last one yesterday, lecture presentation at the King Abdelaziz University in Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I intend to present this tribute because of uh, two main reasons. Reason number one is the fact that we have been taught Islamically, then that if one of us passes away, we are ought to mention his good deeds, his virtues and his qualities. Because our witness, our testimony and our testification are being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith which has been reported by Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, hadith number 2643, a funeral procession was passed by and some companions showered encomiums, mentioned good deeds and the qualities of the deceased and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Wajabat. Another funeral was passed by, another funeral procession was passed by and uh, the companions spoke badly about the deceased and the Prophet said Wajabat. In both situations he used the same word of Wajabat meaning it has been affirmed and confirmed. Companions were flabbergasted. They asked him that in both situations, commendation and criticism, you use the same word of wajabat. And the Prophet replied them by saying, for the first one, you showered encomiums on him and uh, Allah's paradise has been confirmed and affirmed for him. For the second one, you criticize him and you spoke badly about him because of this hellfire has been confirmed and affirmed for him. And the Prophet says, Antum shuhada Allahi fil ardi. You are Allah's witnesses on the earth. So by implication, we are being urged to broadcast and amplify the qualities of our deceased because that testimony, testification and witness are all being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reason number two, his Eminence Abdullah ibn Mas'udin, may Allah be pleased with him, said, "Iqtadu bil-ladina matu fa inna al-hayyalat umanu alayhi al-fitna." Try to emulate those who passed away, because anyone living in this world has no guarantee during afflictions and calamities. By implication, our biography is not terminated until when we pass away. It is the actual time that our biography in this world has come to an end. These are the two main reasons why I intend to mention at least some of his qualities that I know and I do hope that uh, firstly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that for him so that he will be part of the wajabat for Jannah. And uh, secondly, it will be a challenge for us and also our upcoming generations to emulate some of his good virtues in order to sustain uh, the goodness in our society. Number one quality for him is Sheikh Abu Bakr Giro Arubongo. To the best of my knowledge, he spent over three over four of his time in this world inviting people to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He dedicated his time, his energy, his education, and whatever he had at his disposal in order to ensure that uh, people were invited to the true religion and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Quran makes it obligatory upon all of us at least to be fardhu uh, kifaya ala al-ummah when the Quran says وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةُ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ as in Surah Al-Imran verse 104. In this Quran and in so many verses in the glorious Quran, 
The Quran encourages Muslims. The Quran directs Muslims. The Quran makes it imperative for us to ensure that we invite others to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that invitation should not be with our knowledge, but rather with our knowledge, with our qualities, with our good moral behavior, with our kindness, with our generosity, with our fairness, with our justice, with our patience, with our humility, and many more. We have been urged to invite others to our religion by displaying the actual teaching of our religion of kindness, generosity, fairness, and justice, not only through our utterances. Quality number two is Sheikh Abu Bakr Gira Argongo, may Allah have mercy on him, spend his time trying to ensure that the Muslim Ummah was united. He did a lot. I listened to some of his sayings encouraging Muslims to ensure they were united by following the Quran and Sunnah according to the understanding of our pious predecessors. May Allah have mercy on them. And this is indeed another point that is obligatory upon us to ensure that our Ummah is united on the Quran and Sunnah according to the understanding of our Salaf al Salih. And this is what the Quran also expounds to us, like in Surah Al Imrana, verse 103, where Allah Ta'ala says, The unity of our Ummah is not in any way secondary but rather primary and that unity should be through following the quran the sunnah according to the understanding of our, our pious predecessors may allah have mercy on them quality number three he always speaks with justice and fairness even while speaking against the people who disagree with him or those who disagree with his ideology, you will discover that in his utterances, there is a form of a fairness and justice. And this is also what the Quran teaches us by saying, verse number eight. We are hot. We have been challenged to always speak with justice and fairness. Even against the people that disagree with us, we must display that justice and fairness in our statement. And this is indeed very important. And it's among the most difficult issue today in the Muslim world that we try to ensure that people that disagree with us, no matter how good they are, we speak badly. People that are on our side, no matter how evil they are, we try to protect and exonerate them and show at least they are somehow Im Im impeccable and infallible in some ways. And this is indeed very wrong. We are ought to be fair and just in our utterances to the people that are with or against us in any situation. These are some of his qualities and good virtues that I know. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him to overlook his limitations and shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him to be among the companions of paradise. Once again, I repeat my own condolences to his family, to his relatives, his teachers, his students, and also to the entire people of his state and Nigeria and the Muslim Ummah all over the world. And at the same time, I repeat that condolences, the heartfelt condolences to the Sultan al Muslimin and also to Sheikh Abdullah Balalaw as uh, his leader. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. Inna lillahi ma akhaf wa lahu ma abuqa wa kullu shandahu bi ajalim musamma a adham allahu ajirana wa ahsana azaana wa ghafara limayitina. May Allah ta'ala forgive all of us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.